Hello, my name is Nico Schäfer and I will demonstrate our scalable lightweight JSON processor named JSON On Demand Analysis, or short, Yoda. Let's get started with the motivation. Imagine you have a large set of JSON documents with unknown content or structure. We now want to explore and transform this data set for our use case. This can be achieved by analyzing your documents and then filtering them into subsets or changing the structure and contents of the documents using iterative queries. So we need support for efficient filtering, transforming, aggregating, and grouping documents. As we may be confronted with millions of documents and hundreds of gigabytes of data, we also want the system to be scalable. To solve this problem, we have a few options. We could either use Unix tools like SED or JQ, but often these tools are optimized for smaller files and only work in a single threaded manner, which makes them struggle with large data sets. Alternatively, we can use specialized databases for semi-structured documents or use traditional database system with JSON extensions. But in our tests, we saw that the overhead required for durable and consistent database systems and very long data import times makes them unsuitable for exploratory tasks. Lastly, we could also use generic processing engines like Spark, but they are often hard to set up in a scalable manner and require many dependencies. Also, the data scientists may require advanced programming knowledge to use these tools. So we felt a need for a simple JSON exploration and transformation tool exists. Hence, we created Yoda, with the aim to provide a scalable, easy to install and easy to use efficient data analysis tool. The user may import a collection of documents into a system, which are the equivalent of a table in relational database systems but they do not enforce any schema and many different documents may be bundled together in a collection. Within each collection, the system splits the set of documents into containers. Each container is an independent unit and includes everything needed to fully evaluate a query on the documents within, like indices and metadata. When a query is performed against a collection, the system will create a thread pool of all available computing resources and then distribute the containers of the collection over the query threads. Within these threads for each container, the full query pipeline is executed without any need for synchronization. Each input container may result in one output container, which is passed to the desired output collection. Only if an aggregation is performed, the aggregated intermediate results of all query threads are merged once and one uh, output container for all threads is returned. Now that we know what Yoda is, let's see it in action. The Yoda executable may be used as a command line tool or as a server. For the server mode, we also created a web interface for easier usage. Here we see an overview over all collections and query results currently stored in the system. As we can see, we already prepared a 180 gigabyte dataset retrieved from the Twitter API. We also prepared a few queries for our demonstration. Let's start with a small data set of American movies. Each query consists of up to six statements, always starting with the load command, which specifies on which collection we are working, similar to the SQL from statement. Additionally, we can specify an external data source used to import data from. In this case, we will load a JSON file from an URL. Next, we use the S statement to transform our past documents. The JSON file contains only one large array with all entries. To better work with the dataset, we will flatten this array, meaning that we split all array entries into separate documents. We then store the result of this query in a new collection called Movies. And lastly, we delete the original Movies array collection as it is not needed anymore. We are now shown a few statistics about this query. For example, can we see that the dataset consists of approximately 29,000 documents? We can now either download this document set or view it. Let's take a look. Here we can now browse uh, through all documents and result. The documents seem to have a uniform schema, but instead of browsing through all documents to make sure, we will now use a built-in function to analyze the schema of the dataset. set. 
As we can see, the schema is indeed uniform as each attribute exists in all documents and the type is the same for all documents. Let's continue with our data set. In a new query, we may now want to get all action movies. For that, we load the movies collection again and use the choose statement to filter the documents according to a predicate. In this case, we check if the action keyword is contained in the list of genres. As we can see, we now have a list of documents with only action movies. We also see that the documents contain a list of actors that played in the movie. In the following query, we will again flatten this array to create an actors collection containing the name of the actor and the movie he played in together with the year of the movie. Now we can also reverse the original documents by aggregating all movies per actor to create one document for each actor having a list of all movies they played in. For that, we use uh, three queries combined. First, we will aggregate all documents to collect the distinct list of movie titles grouped by the actor. These documents are then stored in a temporary collection. As aggregations always return a single document, we now have to flatten it again into one document per actor in a second query. The last query now renames a few attributes for better readability. As we can see, we now have the des desired documents containing an actor and a list of movies. We could now download this result set and continue using it outside of our system or continue exploring and transforming it in Yoda. Now that we saw a small overview of the capabilities of Yoda, we will use the late, a larger Twitter dataset to show the performance of the system. We know that the Twitter dataset contains nearly 30 million documents with a size of nearly 180 gigabytes. We'll now analyze the schema of this dataset. The program currently runs on a server with 96 cores. On the right side of the display, you now see HTOP, which visualizes the CPU and memory utilization of the server. When you now analyze the, the Twitter dataset, we see that all cores are utilized completely. We can now explore the schema as before, but as we can see, the Twitter dataset is much more complex than our previous dataset. Let's take a look at the various attributes. As we can see, the first attributes exist in about 79% of all documents. But when we now look at the next attribute, delete, we see that it only exists in the remaining 21%. This implies that this data set may contain, may contain two schemas. We can check that by splitting the collection into two new ones. In the first, the attribute delete should exist. In the second, it should not.
we now have the tweets and the delete collections. We can analyze, analyze both again. We now see that the delete collection is again a data set with a uniform schema where each attribute exists in every document. But when analyzing the tweets, we still see that not all attributes are contained in all documents. If we required, we could now further split the data sets into smaller sets. But for now, let's concentrate on different kinds of queries. As we can see, the geo attribute exists in all documents, but is null in most of them. In the remaining documents, it has a coordinates attribute. Uh, which is an array, and a type attribute, which is a string. If we read the API documentation or explore these attributes with our system, we will notice that these are GeoJSON features. We can now extract these features from the tweets to create a valid GeoJSON document. The first query is now a little bit more complex, but essentially we check if the tweet has geo information and if the user is from the USA. We then transform this document into a valid GeoJSON feature with the tweet and the user as properties. Lastly, we aggregate all documents into one large array. In the second query, we use this array to create a feature collection. Below, we can see our aggregated document, which we could now use in an external GeoJSON viewer or application. But the client also notices that the document looks like a GeoJSON feature and allows us to visualize it. Now we can see the tweets from all USA users on the world map. We could also get a list of all popular hashtags. For this, we use multiple uh, queries to aggregate, filter, and transform the documents to get one array with all hashtags that have been used more than 100 times. There are a lot more features in Yoda, which we do not have the time to go into now. But we thank you for listening and hope you enjoyed this demonstration and will check out our project.